Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you. I can see people are hopping on now. Um, I was just reading the messages that Instagram has at the bottom. I'm so excited to um, share some five things you need to know when you are beginning gardening tonight. So thank you for being here. I'm going to quickly wave at you all. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Patty from So Right Seeds. My husband, Daryl, and I are the owners of, we are a small family business with a garden seed company where we offer herbs, flowers, and vegetables. We are so lucky to do what we love, and that is garden and provide really high quality seeds and also just share information and education so that you can be successful. So that's what tonight is all about. So thanks for being here. Um, let's see, I'm going to just clear the messages so that I can, okay, I can see. Awesome. Okay, so tonight is, even if you are not a beginning gardener, tonight will be beneficial, but it is geared towards like, you're wanting to, to garden, you want to be more successful, what are some things that you can think about? Um, and there's so many things, and there's so many ways you can garden, and so, and if you like, start looking for the best way to do something, you're going to just find that there are a million ways. So I'm going to help you not get overwhelmed tonight is the first thing. Um, start growing, just start with what you love. So that's my number one thing is grow what you love. And I would say start small if you're starting out for the first time maybe choose three to five things that you would really like to grow because you'll use them. Like you'll either harvest the herbs or the flowers or you'll eat the vegetables. So start with something that you love. I love, love, love to grow all my own fresh herbs and use them in the kitchen cooking. And I even grow herbs like year round because I love having them. The smell, the texture, it's so much fun to cook with fresh herbs. It makes cooking like really exciting for me. Like tonight, I I, um, I have some thyme growing in the house and I grabbed some thyme off, threw it on my chicken, put it in the air fryer. So I love that, but then I also love growing fresh flowers to just flowers to give, to share with others, flowers to uh, make bouquets, flowers to have in my house. It just brings me a lot of joy. I also love to eat the vegetables and the watermelon, like there's nothing like a garden tomato and a garden watermelon. They're so good. And my husband's love, he really, really loves the uh, vegetables. He's all about the vegetables in the garden. Um, he couldn't join tonight because he is out actually, he rented a ditch witch and he's out there adding more, um, you know, tunnels, little tunnels for our watering system. So anyway, um, so start with what you love and just choose, start small so it's not overwhelming. Think about the things you love. If you don't love beads, don't grow them. Like, don't grow them. I love beads, actually, but I'm just saying, if there's something that you don't love, don't grow it. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to talk about before we dive into the five things is I want you to think about seeds all have very individual needs. They're kind of like your kids. Your kids don't all behave the same way in every situation. And sometimes they need individual attention. And I'm a former teacher, so this, and a mother, so this relates to me like, my kids didn't always need, um, they didn't always have the same needs in the classroom. So think about your seeds that they have individual needs. And so when you're starting small, you can really figure out what those individual needs are. Okay, for example, I'm gonna show you. Here is a pumpkin variety. This does not need to be started inside. You can wait till it's warm outside. For me, that's like end of May, first of June when the soil's warm. So that's the need. I don't have to start this inside right now. So it can just wait until I'm ready to direct So. On the other hand though, here's a pepper variety. Peppers take a long, a longer time and so, and they also like a warmer soil. So I'm gonna actually start them inside and I'm gonna use a heat mat to warm the soil and um, 
let them be in kind of this cozy, warm environment to get started. And then I'm going to wait till it's warm outside before I transplant them. And then they take longer, so they need that. That's a special need for peppers. Rat, here's a radish variety. Radishes are a cool weather crop, so and they have a short you know, planting to harvest time, which I love about radishes. If you're new to gardening and you like radishes, I would consider starting with radishes because they're fun, they're quick, they're easy, and you'll find a lot of joy with that. Um, so there's some different, very different needs of these seeds where the pepper likes it to be warm outside, the radishes likes it cool. So it's a good spring and fall crop for me where I live, so, okay. Number one on our, those are just kind of some thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Now we're going to talk about the five things. So number one is sunlight and light. Um, one mistake that is really, really common is that um, people don't plant their things where there's going to be enough light. And I know this, it sounds so basic, but it can be really tricky because if you haven't walked around your yard and kind of taken note of where the shady spots are at different times throughout the day, you might think that your backyard is shady all day or sunny all day long. But then when you really take note, you'll be like, oh, well, this third has shade from a tree in the morning. And then this side of the house has shade in the evening. So really look for the light. Make sure you, most of the things that you're going to grow, like anything that produces like a fruit or a vegetable or a flower, usually likes um, full sun, unless it's a special like shade variety. So something to think about. You want full sun for a lot of your garden. Um, and I've been fooled by that at times, thinking that a certain spot was sunny all day and then found out, oh, there's actually a big shadow from this tree. So watch your light and take note of that at different times throughout the day. And also to piggyback on that, when you're starting seeds indoors, the biggest, biggest mistake, and I get questions about this all the time, is that you don't have enough light inside. So I love growing indoors and I love having the fresh herbs year round. Um, and that, so I've set up lights so we have some grow stations um, because I don't have a great window. If you have a full sun window, it will do awesome. But you can also just add things like a desk lamp or um, some kind of light that you can put right over your seedlings and that way they will, they will have the light they need. So you could do light a timer or turn it off at night, leave it dark for like eight hours and then leave the light on for like 16 hours a day. So think about that. Like you want to make sure you have enough light. When we start our seedlings, um, we put like, we'll have our seedling trays and we have the lights like just right above it. And then as the seedlings start to grow, we move the trays down or you, we used to adjust the lights up, but then we realized it was easier to just stack the trays and move them down and leave the lights in one spot. So light is really important. That's one of the most basic needs that your seeds will have. Okay, number two is soil. So let's talk about soil. When growing from seed, I like to use a seed starting mix for a couple of reasons. And I'm gonna show you a seed starting mix. So this I actually just purchased, oops, <laughs> you might get some. It's um, a seed starting mix. We buy it in bulk, but you know what? Jiffy makes a great seed start starting mix. It, they sell it at Walmart and a lot of the big box stores. It's not expensive. Um, I think they have a great variety. We buy our we buy a pro mix, which we buy in bulk um, when we go to like a specialty garden store, um, and that works really well too. The pro mix. Um, the nice thing about using a seed starting mix is that it's really light and fluffy. So your seeds can just push their way to the top really easily. So the seeds have everything they need inside the embryo for the, this, uh, the two leaves, the cotyledons to come out and germinate. 
So it doesn't need like compost and heavy, like rich soil until the seed seedling has emerged. So when you're transplanting, you might, I would recommend a potting soil mix and you could mix one together or you could um, purchase one that's already made. So this is potting soil and notice it has, it has like more compost in it. And so it's got bigger chunks. Like you'll notice there will be like, sometimes there's chunks of wood and little just larger pieces. So the seeds, okay, I'm gonna show you so you can compare the two. Really light and fluffy, no big chunks. More big chunks. So this one is definitely has more nutrition because it has the compost in it, but you don't need it quite yet. Not when you're starting from seed. Um, okay, I'm gonna wave to so I see some gardening friends on, so thanks for being here. Um, so when you transplant, you're gonna wanna use the um, potting soil with the nutrition. So let me know if you have any questions on that. Seed starting mix for seeds that's light and fluffy, and then when they get bigger and you transplant, you'll wanna use um, the potting mix. Now out in the garden, this is really important. If you're gonna go to the effort to have a garden, you want to start with your soil and making sure your soil is really healthy. Um, we like to work our soil, loosen it, and then add compost every year and let that compost kind of work its way down in the soil. Um, and also it's really important to cover your soil over winter. We have a, a winter where we're at now. I know some of you that are so lucky to live in Arizona and California have these really lovely short winters. Um, and you might gr actually grow through the winter, um, but we like to use grass clippings or leaves chopped up from the trees and just cover the soil over winter. And that just, the over winter, the soil and the leaves slowly break down and they are just like, make your soil so light, fluffy, workable, and really great. So that's another thing to think about. Um, adding compost to your garden beds, working the soil. Um, we test our soil, um, send it off to like a lab at the university to see what any like nutrients that we need to add. And it's not as hard as you would think. Like, I know that sounds like kind of science, science but it was like $20. We just put it in a little box. We took four samples from the four kind of areas of our garden and sent it off and you know, they send us back a report with um, the quality of our soil and like one suggestion to add um, some more potassium. So, and that that's easy to do. So um, I just think if you're going to, oops, hold on. If you're going to go to the effort, you want to have good soil. Okay. The third thing is water. Seeds need water and gardening you'll need you'll need water and starting from seed and it's a it's a tricky balance because you want i like to say moist but not soggy because if it's soggy you might get that layer of green mold growing on top of your seedling trays so you want to keep it moist while your seeds are germinating but not soggy soggy's like too wet um some things that i like to use to keep um, the seedlings, like after I've planted seeds, I want to cover them. And this is just, you can do this with pretty much any variety is you can use like just some plastic wrap to cover them. What that does, it keeps the moisture in so that your layer doesn't dry out on the top. You can and still check it for water, but as soon as your seedlings come up, you take that off. Another really nice way to do that is you can also buy like a humidity dome and you'll, you've probably seen these in the stores like where you can buy the trays with the little, um, these are the soil pellets that expand when you add water. This is a really easy way to get started. If you're a beginning gardener and you're not sure about buying the big bags and you just want to try it out, I would start with one of these um, trays with the little jiffy pellets, you've got your humidity dome. So the humidity keeps that moisture in and, but you don't want, you don't want the moisture to stay after your seedlings emerge and then it's ready for the lid to come off. So 
that's a really um, a good trick and a good tip for some things, especially if they're harder to germinate. Okay, um, timing. My fourth point on starting gardening is timing. And this is really important because we all live in a little bit different place in the country. And so we want to start our seeds at the right time for our growing zone. And so I'm 6B. And so my average last frost date is around April 18. And so I calculate kind of count back from April 18th of when I'm gonna plant something outside. So for example, if my peppers seed packet says start eight weeks before you're gonna transplant, I can count back from April 18th, like eight weeks. Or to be safe, we, li we live in this area where everybody's like, if you wait till Mother's Day, you're always safe. So you can even count like to Mother's Day back um, in case there's a late frost. So it's important to know when to start your seeds, the timing. Um, and this is something that I have learned through <laughs> lots of experience and lots of uh, failed attempts where I, I didn't start my seeds until like middle of April or end of April. And then it was warm enough outside, but I really didn't transplant them until June. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just if you want to jump start on your garden, there's certain things that you really want to start indoors. Like tomatoes um, take a long time to get established, but and peppers. So those are two. If you like the vegetables, always start those indoors unless you live somewhere incredibly warm. Um, and then when it's warm outside, the soil's warm, and there's absolutely no chance of a frost, then they're ready to go out. Um, flowers are another one I like to start. Sunflower, some flowers, not to be confused with sunflowers. <laughs> sunflowers you can just direct sow outside. They grow super fast, they like it warm. Um, a tip for sunflowers is that when they're first getting started, they like regular watering, but then as they start growing and getting bigger, you can actually let them dry out a little bit. They do well in dry conditions. So that's a, a tip for sunflowers. Let's go back to other types of flowers. So other types of flowers um, take a while to get started. Like I have mine broken up into two week increments. So I have my 10 to 12 week um, flowers that need that much time to grow before they get started. So I've started those. And then I've started like my eight to 10 week flowers as well. So those are all growing inside right now. It's March 15th today, so I have another month plus maybe a couple days to a week till our last frost date. And it's an average date. But So you kind of want to do a little bit of calculating and counting back from your average last frost date. Um, that's really important. So timing is just to kind of, that's why I said in the beginning, start small because you want to figure out the needs of your individual favorites, like those things that you love and want to grow that are your favorites, figure out kind of their specific needs. Remember, they're like kids. They, they're all going to behave a little differently in the situation. So once you know what their individual needs are, then you can figure out um, when you want to start them. And if you're going to start them inside, um, I'm trying to think, let's see, a lot of the flowers I start inside. Um, the things that we wait and direct so outside, those are things that just like summer weather, it's hot, it's warm. Um, a lot of those things are like watermelons, melons, um, cantaloupe, pumpkins, um, all the zucchinis and cucumbers. Some of those you could start inside to get a little bit of a jump start, but they would be absolutely fine to direct so outside. Okay. All right. The last, the fifth most important gardening thing I wanted to talk about um, is pests. Pests in the garden can be so pesky and it can be really frustrating to deal with pests. I know we've had different um, pests in different areas uh, where we lived 
right now where we live, we have a deer are one of our, our most prevalent pests because they just, they come through at night when you're asleep and you don't always see them or rarely see them. And they love to eat those little fresh greens, like your lettuce that just is like three inches tall or your tulips that are coming up. So um, on our growers library, on our website, we have some different articles that talk about managing pests. And I'm gonna share a few of those things with you. Um, so figure out like if you live in an area where you have, maybe it's the bunnies, maybe it's the squirrels, maybe it's the birds, there are, and I know this, this is one of the hardest things I think to, to face in gardening is when you, you spend the time and effort doing it and then you wake up and, you know, something has eaten your red ripe strawberry. So that's really a bummer. So um, think about those things, but here are some ideas for pest management. And then I'm gonna um, also, tell you to go to our, our planters library. On our website, we have hundreds of articles on gardening and we have some really good articles on, um, on pest management. And I'm really excited about our, our blog articles because not only do we have an amazing writer writing these articles, she's also has a passion for gardening. So we get the best of both worlds and she does a Fabulous job. Um, okay, so good garden hygiene. Sometimes it's good. You just want to keep your garden clean, like in the fall, clean out the the vines, and that kind of helps with um, like squash bugs and where they lay their eggs, things like that. So keep your garden clean. Rotate your crops so you're not growing the same variety in the same place every time. That will also help manage um, certain kind of bugs and pests. And it's also better for the soil. It's so much better. You'll wanna rotate your crops. Um, Interplanting or companion planting. And that's where you plant like your onions next to some tomato plants and some pepper plants. And they actually give benefits to each other by being next to each other. Sometimes um, like a certain you know, I'm trying to think of a, a, a little animal that would normally come and eat something. But if you if plant it by something that has an aroma or smells, then they, that will deter them. So um, companion planting is helpful as well. Using some kind of barrier or cloth to cover um, your garden, especially when it's first coming up and those little greens are really tender, that will be important and, and can help to have some kind of barrier. Um, like where I live, we, we are considering putting in just a fence this year for the deer because the deer are one of our biggest pests. Um, so that's like, it either has to be tall enough or wide enough for deer. Um, I've known people who use like a cloth or a barrier over their garden or even have built a structure in a cage. Now that to me sounds like a lot of work, but it is definitely um, an option. But some of the easier things you can do are to just, you know, cover with um, the like the cloth until it gets bigger. I did that on my um, tulips. I have to do that on the tulips in the spring because the deer will eat the tulips at night when they're first coming up. But then once they get big and they start to have a flower on them, they won't eat them. I also plant daffodils next to the tulips. They don't eat the daffodils. So that's another way to deter. Um, some, there are lots of natural options that are better for the environment, better for the earth, better for your soil that you can use instead of just always using something that that kills and adds toxins to the soil. Um, diatomaceous earth um, is a good one. Neem oil is another one, an insecticidal soap. Um, and then we kind of explain what these are on our growers library, so you can check those out. Um, so anyway, pests are, are hard. They really are pesky. Um, but there's different, also different like plants that like 
marigolds and lavender, the deer tend not to like. So a lot of people will put some marigolds in their garden next to their vegetable. And some of the more um, fragrant herbs are also a good thing to use in your garden as well next to the vegetables. So lots and lots of information. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, I will stay on a minute. I'm just going to wave at everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, we're so happy to provide um, information and education in on gardening to help you be successful. And that's one of our main goals after providing, um, our main goal is to provide the highest quality, fresh heirloom non-GMO seeds for home gardeners and then to give you tips and information on growing. And then we also, through our seed donation program, like to support organizations that are helping fight hunger. So we feel like that's really important to give back to our world. So anyway, um, be sure to check out our planters library. And then this is the, the most exciting thing. On our website, under Planters Library, we have a seed starting guide, which is a document that you can download that gives you kind of a time frame for all different varieties of vegetables and herbs and flowers. So go check it out, and I will also post that on Stories with a link so you can find it easy. So anyway, thank you for being here. Um, feel free to ask any questions if you have any. It's fun seeing uh, people I know on here that I've been interacting with. So thank you so, so much. Um, I will save this and make sure that it is, is on our um, Instagram so that you can watch it later or refer back to it. So anyway, those are my five gardening tips for beginning gardeners are sunlight, soil, water, timing and pests with the overall principle of grow what you love and start small so you're not overwhelmed and then expand as you um, keep gardening. Happy gardening everyone. Let's see I'm just going to check really quick to see if I have any questions. I'm trying to wave at everyone too. Thanks for being here. Oh, yay. Thank you, Kim, for ordering lemongrass. Um, you're going to love it. My lemongrass is over there growing on my shelf. So, and yes, it's easy to get overwhelmed in gardening. Okay, have a great evening, everyone. Happy gardening. Please reach out if you have any questions. We are so happy to help. Hey, gardening friends, welcome to my live. I am